We are going to start the year with a high risk one. This is going to be Grok and this is going to be four lessons on how not to get wrecked in crypto in 2024. So if you're new to crypto, you've got $100, you want to put your money into cryptocurrency and you want to stick your $100 into Grok, where should you stick it? You shouldn't stick all your $100 into Grok, guys, because that's not the way that you can succeed in cryptocurrency, unfortunately. So these four key steps, write them down and I promise you they'll help you along your way with any of your investments, whether it's crypto, whether it's commodities, stocks, whatever it is that you're into. First one, how do you allocate risk? Allocate risk is a big, big question. You need to ask yourself, firstly, is a project high risk? Is it medium risk or is it low risk? But how can you identify that? We're going to go through a couple of steps in a minute to show you exactly how you can actually identify that. Support and resistance. We all know we buy support. We all know we sell resistance. But how do we know where the support lines are and how do we know where the resistance lines are? And that brings us to momentum. We want to be swimming with the whales. We want to be flowing with the money. If the money's going bullish, we want to be bullish. If the money's going bearish, we want to be bearish. We're not going to swim against the current. We're not fighting for that. We're flowing with the money. That's the sensible thing to do. And that gives you a higher probability of success. So stop losses. Know when you're wrong. It's all about probabilities. Whether you're trading crypto, whatever it is that you are trading, the market will do whatever the hell it bloody likes. So you need to respect that. And you need to identify where it is that you're wrong. How much are you willing to lose? If you've got $100, if you've got $10,000, and the maximum that you're willing to lose is 2%, you need to pull your stop loss down to that maximum of 2%. And if that's not an appropriate area, guys, that's also a recipe for disaster. So how can you identify where to put your stop loss? So firstly, how can we allocate risk and how can we identify risk on Grok? I've told you it's high risk, guys, but how do I know it's high risk? First thing I like to do, go on CoinGecko and see where it is as far as the crypto rankings concerned. This is a really simple step. It's ranked 717 as far as the whole of the crypto market is concerned. And the way that that's calculated is by its market cap. So it's got a 32 million market cap and circulating supply of six and a half billion with a 6.9 billion maximum in circulation. So that tells us it's high risk. It's got quite a decent trading volume and um, within 24 hours of nearly 9 million and fully diluted valuation there is 34 million. Second thing that I like to do is go onto this website, Certic Skynet. And this gives us a ranking out of 100 and it tells us whether a project's good fundamentally or whether it is high risk. So this one gives us concern because it's got low fundamental health, it's got low operation resilience, it's got no code security, the community trust's low, the market stability is low and the governance strength is about the only thing that's keeping it going. So any of you guys that just thought I was going to shill Grok, I do apologize. This is more of an educational one. It's more of a thing as to how to teach and not to get wrecked in crypto. So first thing is allocate risk. And that's the first thing that I like to do. You can see there's not much data on the chart. It's a new project. So I would allocate my risk accordingly. Support and resistance. And support and resistance is going to be one of the most powerful tools in your toolkit. I promise you that. So anybody that's new to cryptocurrency watching this, Get yourself on trading view and it's completely free to use and you can follow along with me because what it does is it helps you understand price action and once you understand price action and you understand fair value you understand how to allocate capital accordingly and you understand how to allocate risk it gives you an edge in the market i promise you that so if you're new completely familiarize yourself with trade in view and one thing that we can do to add in our support and resistance lines which is which is what this is all about we're looking to buy support we're looking to sell resistance but we don't know where to apply these it's one simple trick that i want to show you is get yourself onto the line chart on trade in view and this does something magic it takes out the volatility of the extreme highs and it takes out the volatility of the extreme lows of the day. So these are the candle closers and that's represented by the line chart. So what we can do is we can just join the dots. How many times has it touched before? Because if it's touched previously before, we expect it to be touched in the future. And this is the first area here, this key support zone. What does this tell us? You've come up, you've come back down, you've tested this once, you've tested this again, you've made a run. And as we're coming back down and coming back down, what did we say? If it's previously acted as support and resistance, we're expecting it to act again. And it's come back down, it's flipped down as resistance. And look at this, completely tested this resistance line and rejected from it. If we'd have added this line in here, we would have known that that would have happened. So all we do is we're just joining up the dots. How many times has this previously been touched before? This is an area that's been touched once, twice, and you can see the zone is being respected. So we can just keep adding our lines here. One, 
one, two, three, four. It's come back down. You expect it to act as resistance. So you're not going to be buying at this level here. We know that this is going to be resistance once it's fallen through. And once you've added these lines, it gives you a clear picture as to where you expect price action to go and what is fair value. So this gives us a bit of a clearer picture now. We know where our support lines are. We know where our resistance lines are. And we know that resistance is for selling. We know that support is for buying. And we know that we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. And this Grok's just an example. I urge you, if you're new to crypto, don't start just investing in high risk meme coins because you won't be interested in crypto for very long once you've lost all your money. So the next thing that we're going to do is talk about swimming with the whales. You might hear that expression time and time again. What does it actually mean? It means where is the flow of money and how can you identify where the flow of money is? We know that we're making a series of higher highs and higher lows when we're in a bullish trend. We make a series of lower highs and lower lows when we're in a bearish trend. So that's an important thing, guys. And if you know whether you're in a bullish trend or whether you're in a bearish trend, it helps you know where the flow of money is. And what we can do is just stick back to our uh, bar chart, gives us a clearer picture. We could stick a momentum line on there now. And what a momentum line is, it's just a diagonal trend line. This gives us an idea as to whether the bulls in the short term are going to regain any kind of momentum. And we know that because this has been respected time and time again. So you've got rejection here. You've nearly got rejection here. You've come back down. Rejection, rejection, rejection. If the bulls pop their head up here, we know that it's just buying and selling. There's buyers and sellers in this one. And there's buy orders and there's sell orders at these key support or resistance levels. And if there's more buyers than sellers and there's more mo uh, flow of money in the buyers than the sellers, we know that the price is going to go up. But we know here that we're making a series of lower highs, we're making a series of lower lows. We know that here, clearly, the bears have got momentum. So what do we need to happen? for the bulls to regain any momentum. We need that higher high and we need that higher low. So we need them to pop their head up through here, come back down, test this previous line that was acting as resistance, as support, put in a new high and take out this level here, this higher high. That's gonna allow us to know when the bulls have got momentum. So are you buying when they pop their head up? There's two things that you can do here and there's two things that traders tend to do. You've got breakout traders and you've got retest traders and you've got breakout and retest traders. Some will buy here once they've popped the header. Some will wait for the retest, which is exactly the same level and a higher confirmation that you're going to get a move to the upside. So there's two sets of buyers here. There's the breakout buyers and there's a the retest buyers. And that's why once you've got this change of momentum and you put in a new high, the Sellers become the buyers and then the buyers are interested even more. And then the trend reverses and you start creating those higher lows and the higher highs, which is what we're waiting for. Now, stop losses. This is an important thing because as far as price action is concerned, let me just clear this up a little bit. As far as price action is concerned, what this allows us to do is get cheaper prices. We know that if price action is going to push down and create a new low, we know that that's cheaper than what it would be if we just bought at this level anyway. We know that the bears have got the momentum and we know that we're looking to swim with the whales. So what we're waiting for is the bulls to regain momentum. Until we've got this, the bulls haven't regained any momentum and we can still put in those lower lows and lower highs, but it helps to take advantage of this level. Once you've got the break, this is the important thing, once you've got the break and once you've got a retest, what that allows for is you to apply the next step, which is appropriate risk management. And what I mean by that is you can position yourself and put your stop loss below the previous low. We expect to make higher lows, remember, as far as the probabilities are concerned, we're expecting the flow of money to be with the bulls. We're expected to make higher highs and higher lows. So by putting this below this previous low, that helps us identify when we're wrong. And if you like support and resistance, guys, and if you've just set up trade and view and you're looking to add in your levels of support and resistance, if you think that that works well, if you apply another indicator that tells you whether the market's overbought or oversold at any point, that can give you an additional edge in the market. And it works so well with support and resistance levels. So that's the stochastic RSI, and I've got a video here. So check that out, guys, if you want to know how to use that to your advantage. I'm nearly at 5,000 subscribers. 4.96. So subscribe to the channel if you're new. Take care, join the community and goodbye from me.